Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Karen Harris, and I love to film beauty videos and review videos. So if you're interested, don't forget to subscribe down below and definitely check out some of my other videos. I do upload every other day, so you do get quite a bit of content from me. Today I'm gonna to do something a little bit different. I haven't filmed one of these videos before, but basically I will be retrying the Huda Rose Gold Palette. Now I picked this palette up when it first launched and there was just a lot of controversy with it. The website crashed and it launched on her website in Dubai before it launched here in America. So there was a whole bunch of stuff. Anyway, a lot of blood, sweat and tears later, I did get a hold of this palette and once I got it, I just didn't really love it. And if you have been around on my channel for a while, you definitely know I'm not afraid to speak my mind on this palette. I just felt like it was very overpriced. I really didn't like those textured shadows on the top because I just felt like they were very difficult to work with. And this packaging for $65 was really quite unimpressive. I mean, the sleeve looked really good, but this is essentially what you're getting is a bunch of cardboard and then this clear plastic top. So anyway, I had a lot of complaints about this palette. But since Huda announced pretty recently that she's coming out with her next palette, which is the Desert Dust palette, if you haven't seen it, I'll throw a picture up right here so you can check it out. It looks like an amazing, beautiful palette. I'm not gonna lie, guys, I'm definitely tempted to pick it up. And I think just for review purposes, I will buy it if I get the chance. If it doesn't sell out and, you know, something crazy doesn't happen, I will pick it up. But I just thought it would be so fun to go back and try the rose gold palette and see if I still hate this because if I really don't see myself using this in the future, I will probably declutter this palette. But I just thought it would be fun to go back and play with it. And I know there's a lot of like series that are coming out, like as far as the TARDIS um, in bloom, there's, they're coming out with like a bronze palette. I don't know when that's happening, um, but I just thought it'd be fun to go back to the first edition and then see if I still hate it and then will I be picking up the new version of the palette. Same with the Natasha Denona, the Lila palette. I'm super tempted to pick that one up too. Again, it just depends on if I'll actually be able to get my hands on these things because they sell out so quickly. But without further blabbering, let's get into playing with this palette. And guys, before I start playing with makeup, I didn't remember to mention this, but the new Huda palette, the Desert Dust palette, retails for $65. And it includes 18 shades, eight mattes, six pressed pearls, three duochromes, and one pure glitter and will be available globally September 18th online at Sephora. If you want more information on that, you can definitely check out Trend Mood's page. I'm directly reading from her Instagram page and I will link it down below as well if you guys are curious at all about where I get my information from. So if you haven't taken a closer look at this palette, this is what it looks like. So this whole top row up to here are these textured shadows and I just played with the Desi and Katie palette from Dose of Color and honestly those shadows kind of have the same consistency. So I'm going to leave that review for that particular video but these textured shadows remind me a lot of those Desi and Katie shadows so you can almost guess what I what my thoughts are on that palette but um, it is very beautiful this is definitely one of the first like warm palettes that came out and I personally love this shade right here which is called angelic it's a beautiful like duochrome pink gold shadow it was probably one of my favorite colors in this palette. The rest are some really beautiful matte shades. So all of this here is like basically matte. This one looks like a little bit of a shimmer as well. It's called Moon Dust and it's just like a basic like neutral gold shade. Like a really beautiful lid color. And then there is one more textured color down here which is hashtag blessed. So I mean I have no problem with this color palette. I think it's absolutely beautiful. My problem with it was the shipping was crazy, the launch was crazy, it was just a hard palette to track down and is it worth the price is what we really want to think about is is it worth that $65 price tag because that's definitely high end on like the Sephora scale. So without further blabbering let's get into this. I'm going to use the shade Bay right here just to set my shadow so I'm just going to grab this Wet n Wild brush Okay, so I think that's pretty good. So let's start off with the crease. Now, 
You guys, this shade Shy is like my favorite eyeshadow color ever. Not this particular palette, but just the shade in general. It's like a beautiful mauve color. So I'm going to blow that out in my crease. I'm just going to grab a fluffy crease brush. This is the Morphe E27. And I'm just going to pat that in here, pick up some of the shade, and then just swirl that into my crease here. If you just follow these steps, you can basically pull off any eye look. It's more about like using the right colors and of course blending. So you can see that shade is like blown out in my crease. So now I kind of want to play with this shade Flamingo, which is like a hot pink shade. I'm going to use a less fluffy brush. So this E27 is pretty fluffy. I'm going to switch to this brush, which is an M433. It's more of a concentrated blending brush. So I'm going to try and place it more precisely in the crease. So again, I'm just going to tap the shadow so that my brush picks it up. And then basically I'm just going to hold it like this and then just concentrate that closer to the crease, like really working it into the crease, not really going above the crease. So you see how that's like much more concentrated in the crease. And then I'm just going to grab this fluffy E27 brush and just blend that mauve shade a little bit more closer to the brow bone, but keeping this like closer in the crease. And then just dusting that off. Then I'm gonna tap into the shade Man Eater, which is like a red shade. And what we're gonna do with that is focus it more on the outer corner. Okay, so that is good. And then I'm just gonna grab the fluffy brush again. And just to diffuse it so we don't have any harsh lines, I'm just going to blend a little bit. And then I'm going to take this brush again, dust it off a little bit, get some of that red off, and then go into the shade Coco, which is a dark brown. And again, I'm just going to try and darken it up a little bit more in the outer V. And then let's just use a little bit of black truffle as well, which is the black shade. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with a little bit more of Flamingo. And I don't know, guys. Eyeshadow is all about blending. That's really the trick is just finding the time to sit and constantly just move your hand back and forth because it just makes it more more beautiful when it's blended versus like harsh lines and then i just want to do the lids so let me grab a flat shader brush and i'm going to try the shade that i told you guys i thought was really pretty which was angelic and this is the morphe m224 these are actually under concealer on the morphe website but i love to use them for setting shadow down because they're like a perfect little paddle brush so I'm going to just use this on my lid and you can see it's not very opaque at all. It's basically just like glitter. There's no like color payoff. So what I'm going to do is grab some Mac Fix Plus and wet my brush because I think that'll make a difference. So I just did one quick spritz and we're going to try it again. See if we can get more of a foiled effect. Again, this color is so beautiful when you swatch it, but I can't, it's not foiling the greatest and I just want to blend it a little bit more right there. So there's that and then let's try one of the textured shadows. So let's do a little bit of this rose gold shade. You really can't use a brush with these. So dried out, they remind me of the Stila liquid, those like metal things that they had what do they call not the glitter ones they have now but they're they're like they came with like a little liquid and then you had to like blend them together like this sucks because it's literally like flex and I feel like I'm trying to press like a foil onto my eye and it's not really sticking and like look at that fallout now so that's a mess so I'm just gonna stop because I'm okay with the way it looks like I don't like 100% love it but I'm okay with it, how it looks and I don't want to deal with fallout because my face is already done. 
um, because I did my face ahead of my eyeshadow. So I'm going to just stop and leave it right there and show you guys. So I'm very basic with my makeup. I don't know any like cool tricks to do. And this is the look I came up with. So I'm Okay guys, so I did put my mascara on and this is the finished look. I did also smoke out a little bit of flamingo in my lower lash line as well as the shade Man Eater. So this is the completed look and I'm just gonna show you guys. Also, this highlighter I have on is Mirame by Desi and Katie. And I also have the new NARS stick foundation on. I'm honestly not a huge fan of it. I feel like the coverage is okay. And personally, just looking at myself in the mirror, I feel like it has, like, emphasizes a lot of texture on my face. So I'm not sure I love it. Plus, I feel like I have to put a ton on for coverage. So compared to the Hourglass stick foundation, this one is a little bit, like, meh. But yeah, we're talking about the Huda palette, so check out this eye look. And I'm going to zoom you guys back out so we can talk about my final thoughts on this palette. Okay guys, so I did zoom you back out to kind of finish off this video. And overall, even though I do like the mattes in this palette, I just thought that for one, two, three, four, five, six of the shades being those textured shadows that she called them, I just feel like it wasn't worth the price at all. They're really unworkable. Like, I'm sure you guys saw it when I was doing my eyeshadow. Like, I can't get anything out of this. See, like, yeah, it swatches nicely, but to get that foiled look to translate on your eyeballs is pretty much impossible for me. And like I said, I'm not a professional, so maybe a professional can make this work. But to me, I just thought these were very gimmicky, and you just didn't get a whole lot for your money with this palette. So. Because of that, I definitely still do not like this palette. I think I will still pick up the Desert Dust palette because, of course, I'm a YouTuber. I love to play with new makeup, see new formulas, and I don't believe she's got any textured shadows in this new palette. So I feel like maybe she learned from a previous mistake. And also, she does have like a pure glitter in the palette. So I do anticipate that a lot of people will run into trouble with that because I don't know why you would include like a pressed pure glitter in a palette. I feel like that's just going to cause a huge mess. Uh, but that's just my personal opinion. But let's just wait for the palette to come out. If I do pick it up, you'll definitely see swatches and a review on my channel. So again, don't forget to subscribe down below. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye!